Shalom, shalom for our house, wherever you are, I greet you in the name of Jesus. My name is Aline Tessie, and I'm going to be your host of today. Um, I'm going to bless you with one of the verse which blessed my heart, and I hope it's going to bless yours as well. So it is in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, which says that, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things, faced in and hidden, which you do not know. So I wish you to call upon the name of Jesus, and he will bless you as well. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. Um, we thank you that you have been with us wherever around the world, God. You have been guiding us. You have been protecting us, God. Uh, through this pandemic season, God, you have been the God that we know. Thank you so much, God, for your guidance. Thank you so much, God, for your love. And thank you so much for all you have done for us, God. So we call upon your name today, God. May your presence be with us. May your presence guide us. May your presence uh, come before us, God. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much for each and everything that you have done and each and everything that you are still doing, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we are going to welcome our prayer house worship band.
restless, but he brought me in all his love for me, all his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free, all his free. This night
Hello, good people. Hi, hi, hi. So good to be back. So good to uh, to continue with our series, um, Someone on the Mount. Uh, this is the second episode, um, second time, if you will, um, whatever you call it. Uh, the previous Monday it was just an introduction. And I think today we're just going to get into the scripture. And um, just to give you a little bit of the background, you know, the whole point of, 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 of starting, of, of, of just like doing series like this in a time like this. Um, just so you know, the Sermon on the Mount is the very first sermon that Jesus preached um, after when he had just started in his ministry, all right? Uh, it wasn't the first sermon he preached because at the age of 12, uh, he was in the synagogue, uh, you know, sharing the word of God. But at the age of 30, right now, he just like started his ministry, all right? Uh, he, he, he just like did the 40 days and nights of prayer and fasting. He just did, um, he just picked his 12 disciples. Uh, he just got baptized, not in that order, of course, but... But you know, all of those those were the series of things that were done before he started the he started the summer on the mount. And uh, now finally he's preaching, he's getting into the what. And um, when I was preparing for this, I was just like thinking about uh, thinking about this whole idea. You know, finally God is, is, is finally Jesus is 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 now um, addressing the people. He's talking to the people, right? He's God, you know. He, you know, he was God, you know, at the beginning. But I feel like from the from the last time, from the from the prophets uh, to the to the New Testament, God had not actually said the word. You know, finally, God is saying some words, and it was very interesting that the very this this sermon that Jesus preached were the very first words that God spoke to the people. The first time he saw them after so many years of not even just God speaking, but not even a word of God, not even a word being heard, not even the prophets hearing anything from God. Now, finally, God is speaking himself and he's, and he's face to face with the people. And it was, you know, when I was, pre- you know, preparing for this, I was like thinking about what is it that God wanted to tell the people? What is it? Are you, aren't you curious to know what God had in his mind, you know, the next time or the time that he actually meets with the people face to face and and hear the words that Jesus spoke. And it was very intentional. It was very interesting. Uh, the words that he chose to speak as his first um, sermon, as his first preaching, as his first uh, contact with the people. It was, it was it, you, you want to find um, some great things in here. But that brings me to today, you know, fast forward to now 2,000 years later. And I feel like those are the same words that Jesus would be speaking to the people right now in during this time we're in, during these unprecedented times that the world is facing right now. You know, he is still keeping it real. He is still uh, speaking the same words. And those words were not, were, were no other, but the words that concern our hearts, that concern the condition of our heart, the words that concern, um, that concern how do we live with each other, how do we live with God, you know, those were the things that he was concerned more than anything. So without further ado, let's just like dig in into the word and the, and then hear what God says. So the, these are the very, remember, remember, these are the very first words that Jesus is preaching, the very first words that Jesus is talking, is telling the people, right? So let's go. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1. And we're going to read all the way to verse 11, right? Um, if you are new to the Bible, or if you're reading the Bible, just so you know, Matthew is, a, is the very first book of the New Testament, right? So here we go, chapter 5. So it says, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in the heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
uh, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. So this, this group of scriptures that I just read, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 11, it's called the Beatitudes, all right? And the Beatitudes mean basically, Beatitude, it's a, it's a word that means blessing, okay? These are blessings, and, um, and unlike the blessing, you know, that we know, that, that you know, the, the famous, the blessing song that we've been singing, that that was a blessing without a condition. I feel like these blessings are being given, are being suggested by Jesus. And remember, these are the very first words that he is preaching. It's very first somewhere that he's preaching. And he's, he goes straight into the condition of heaven. He's basically saying, you know, if you want to see the kingdom of God, if you want to see God being manifested in your in your life, in your in your in your in your in, in your in your in your in your life, in your family, in your workplace, in whatever you are into in your world, you will be you know, he blessed are you if you do these things, you know? And he says, Blessed are you if you are poor in the spirit, you know, and, and we're gonna break it down, you know, in a minute. But I just wanted to tell you guys that all of these things, all of these things that Jesus is talking about, eight beatitudes, or like, you know, from verse 1 to verse 11, there's nothing that has anything to do with the physical, with the, with the out, outward things, you know? He's not saying, blessed are you when you join the choir. He's not saying, blessed are you when, when you go to the market and you start preaching. He's not saying, blessed are you when you... Uh, when you put up a cross, you know, in, in front of your house, it's not saying none of those things. It's not saying uh, none of the outward things that we always tend to put up, to put, to put on, to put on, and think that you know the whole world. It's not even saying blessed are you when you go on Facebook and <laughs> and comment and and you know and just like you know be you know show your Christianity, show that you you know you are. You are the man of God, and you have to defend your faith. You know, it's it's it's, it's not it's none of that. It's basically saying, "How is your heart?" It's talking about real things. It's talking about peace. It's talking about meekness. It's talking about uh, peacemakers. It's talking about uh, mercy. You know, if you are merciful, those are the things that he's really concerned. It's like manifesting. It's like. Um, He's now like sending out a new message. He's sending out the message, you know, and remember the message of the Pharisees and Sadducees and the teachers of the law was all about how you look, was all about how, how you, you know, how strong you are to your religion, how strong and faithful you are to your religion and to the, re to the religion of your fathers. And now Jesus is coming and saying, your heart, how is your heart? Check your heart. Check your thoughts. Check your mind. How is how are you? You know, with love for each other. How are you with love for God? How are you with with fighting? You know, just like standing for the principles and the, for, of the kingdom of heaven. That's the that's the new. Basically, I feel like if when Jesus had just like mentioned the beatitudes, which was, which was obviously the very first thing that he talked about, he could have been one of those preachers who say that who just read one verse and say. We can go home now, you know. He could have said, you know, now we can go home. This is all about the kingdom of God. If you've heard of these things and you go and, and, and do them, then the kingdom of God has entered you, has come to you. That's what I feel like he, he, he could have said because everything is in here. When you do these things, the kingdom of God is manifested in you in a great and a, in, in, in a powerful way. Amen? Now let's break it down a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to take long, but he says the, first, the very first thing is that blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Basically, he's saying, blessed are you when you know that your spirit is still needy. When you re when you realize that you are still you still you are still poor, because poverty means we all know, that, especially for those those of us you know who know like first hand experience of what poverty is. Uh, poverty means lack, you know. Poverty means being without, you know, and uh, some of us have gone without for so long. And so 
Uh, he's saying, if you know you are poor in the spirit, if you know that your spirit lacks, then you will be blessed because you're not going to sit around or just like, and you know, sleep around and just like, you know, be like, oh, yeah, it's cool. You know, no, you, when you are, when you are lack, when you are in luck, you, you start to search, right? When you are poor, you start to, to go out and, you know, and, 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 and work hard and, and work harder than people who have or who, who have been blessed or have inherited things, you know? And so blessed are you when you are poor in the spirit for the kingdom of God will be yours. Amen. It will be yours. Poor, poor people know how to work hard. They know how to, they wake up early in the morning and, 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 and you know, I, it's interesting that when I traveled up country, when I was in Rwanda, I traveled up country and I see, and I would see those farmers at three in the morning riding their bicycles, bringing food in the city, you know, to just make money. And because poverty makes you, there is something about poverty that makes you not settle. It makes you like work harder and when you realize that you're poor in the spirit the kingdom of god will be yours because you're gonna long for it you're gonna work for it the second beatitude they say blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted and this one most of the times people always uh confuse this when they say when they think that when he said blessed are those who mourn for they should for they shall be comforted he meant that um blessed are those who lose uh their loved ones um it could be applied to that because Obviously, when we are mourning, when we have lost our, very, our, 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 our loved ones, God is there and He's always comforting us. But this one in particular, God was meaning, Jesus was meaning, blessed are you when you get uncomfortable because of your sin. Blessed are you when you have sinned, but you realize that you cannot just live in the condition of sin and enjoy it, but you're gonna run out of it immediately and go and 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 and, and just like uh, go to the feet of Jesus and tell him, I'm sorry, I have sinned, but this is not who I am. You know, I wanna be I wanna be a better person. Blessed are you when you mourn, when you are feeling uncomfortable for your sin, for the condition of sin. He said, then then uh then you shall be comforted because God loves people like those. Because you remember the life of David. David was a messed up man. He sinned all the time. But every single time he knew that he had sinned, he went without anyone telling him anything, without anyone inviting him to do so. He would go and just like uh, put on sackcloths and, and, and go in the ashes and, 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 and start crying to God and praying and crying saying, God, I want you to forgive me for my sin is so loud inside of me. And that's what God is inviting you. Say, blessed are you when you mourn over your sin because you shall be comforted. Amen. Now the third, the third beatitude, they said, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Now this word meek basically means um, the people who have authority. <laughs> the big, the big, um, People who have authority or people who have more than enough, but who choose to use or even uh, or who choose to use their their authority or their or their um, or their positions to, for the good of others, you know. And and you know the big conversation lately has been about the privileges, you know. And there is no better um, there is no better. Uh, 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 illustration of, 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 of this verse than, than the idea of people who are privileged. You know, when you have privileges, but you're using your privileges for the betterment of others. You know, Jesus is saying, blessed are you, blessed are the meek, you know, for they will inherit the earth. Amen. The earth will be yours because when you get, when you get, um, when you get promoted, when you get into a new level of of blessings and you want to ch and you choose to use those blessings to use those privileges to help others god will never stop to continue to pour blessings in your lap and that's what jesus meant by the meekness amen it goes on and he says uh blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness amen blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled amen if you want to be righteous, if you want to, if you want to do the right thing, if you want to 
if you want to uh, if you want to be the man you know who who is who is faithful to your to your to your, you know who is faithful to to to, the, to your friends to your wife to your family to your workplace you know man when you continually are searching for righteousness and to do the right thing my friends you shall be filled amen you shall be filled with with all the good things with righteousness it said blessed are the merciful they will, for they shall for they will be shown mercy when you show mercy you shall be shown mercy let me tell you rich or poor strong or weak no matter what condition you are in in this world there is always a time when you need mercy amen and when you need mercy you can call out and the mercy shall be shown unto you you know even to the even from the people or from the from the situations that you never even expected amen because when you say uh, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god man you know pure in heart if you are pure in heart you shall see god god can never ignore you god can never overlook you when you are pure in your heart and you know that there is nothing that is there is nothing, there is no wall that you, you are building, that you built. There is no hatred, there is no uh, envy, there is no uh, anger, there is no uh, jealous. You know, when your heart is pure, God, with God, you, you, will see, you will see God. The blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Amen. This is so powerful. This is a very powerful verse, man. If there is anything that the world needs right now, it's peace. Man, people need peace. People need peace. And, and, and there is a lot of like attacks here and there, you know, on social media, on, on, uh, on, on, uh, on just like people, you know, individuals. And, 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 and God is saying, be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker, man. Like, even when you are, even when you are persecuted, or like you are on the side of the persecutor, of, of those who are persecuted, man, try to be a peacemaker. And when you become a peacemaker, you shall be called the son of God. Amen. And then he goes on. He said, um, "Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." Man, if you're persecuted, you know, because of your choice of following God, of, of knowing Him, of making Him known, you, you shall see the kingdom of heaven. And then he wraps up by saying, Blessed are you when, you, when, when they insult you or persecute you and falsely accuse you all kinds of evil uh, because of Him, because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they, persecu they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Man, don't shy away from the kingdom of heaven. This is, this is the very first thing. These are the very first words that Jesus is preaching to the people that had gone silent for a, long, for a long time. And now he's finally speaking to them and he says... Don't shy away from, from this kingdom that I'm introducing to you. Don't shy away from righteousness. Don't shy away from godliness. This is what Jesus is inviting us. This is how he is making his kingdom look like. Blessed are you because the kingdom of God is the kingdom of peacemakers. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of, of, pure in, of those who are pure in heart. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of those who are righteous. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of those who are meek. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Amen. Amen. And there is no better time that we need these virtues. There's no better time that we need these, these, uh, these truths than right now in the midst of the world that is sinking so deep and without hope. Amen. Man, I was like, you know, like thinking about everything that's going on, that is happening. And I was like, man, I don't see any solution. Honestly, I don't see any solution. And I started praying and saying, God, Jesus, the only solution I see here is that you will come back, you know. And, 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 and just, there's a lot of arrogance. There is a lot of arrogant people. There is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, people out there who are just, 
who are just like, man, and I was asking Amanda the other day, I was like, why would people choose evil? Why is there so much evil, you know? And I want to tell you that this is how Jesus invites us to look like in his kingdom. He's inviting us to be to walk in his righteousness and to stand for the kingdom of God and to stand for these truths because when you when we do so then he shall be glorified and when he's glorified this world shall see and shall know peace amen amen that's it those are the beatitudes man check your faith check your check the condition of your heart because it's less about it's less about the statements we make, you know, through our outward appearance, through the things that we do out there that people are impressed with and so much to do with the condition of your heart. And that's what he's inviting us to do right now. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you. And then um, I will see you guys next time. Dear God, I just want to bless the people who have just heard these beatitudes. People who have heard these words. Just pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, these words will sink deep in their hearts. It will sink deep in our hearts, God. And I pray that every single person who gets to encounter these words, oh God, they will give it a thought and they will sit somewhere silent, somewhere uh, silently and, and, and silently just think about these words, meditate upon them and check the condition of their hearts because when we do so, you shall be glorified. And when you will be glorified, God, this world shall know peace. This world shall know hope. It shall know love because there's no other hope that we have in this world except from you, except by you. So we thank you, God, and we give you praise that you're going to continue to move our hearts and to change the condition of our heart and making us better people for the glory of your name we love you father and we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you guys i will see you next time take care of each other and take care of yourselves and uh stay safe god bless you